हेलो गाइस दिस इज भावेश कृपलानी एंड वेलकम टू दिस वंडरफुल सीरीज फैंटास्टिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड वेयर टू यूज देम सो यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट इन दिस सीरीज वी डिस्कस सम यूनिक एंड इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट्स व्हिच आर नॉट यूजुअली कवर्ड इन योर रेगुलर सिलेबस नाउ दिस कॉन्सेप्ट्स विल गिव यू अ वंडरफुल न्यू पर्सपेक्टिव इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द वेरियस फिजिकल फिनोमेना सो इन टुडेस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस बाइनरी स्टार सिस्टम्स बट बिफोर दैट आई हैव अ स्मॉल क्वेश्चन फॉर यू okay so here you can see i have got two stars over here right the two stars have masses m1 and m2 and the separation between them is r now suppose that both the stars are initially at rest okay there is no other force except the mutual gravitational attraction so they will start coming towards each other and they will collide at the position of the center of mass right now my question is what is the time taken for them to collide try to solve this question and then come back to this video so before going into the problem let's understand some basics once more and try to solve some simpler problems based on them okay so let's first look at the circular orbit of a planet around a sun okay so in this case the sun will remain at the center and it will remain stationary okay the sun is very heavy so it remains almost stationary the planet is revolving around the sun okay the masses have been given for the planet and the sun right and the orbital radius is equal to r then we know that the orbital speed is given by root of gm by r correct and the time period for revolution of the planet is 2 pi under root r cube divided by gm okay now circular orbit is only one special kind of an orbit okay but a more general type would be an ellipse okay so again you are given your sun and your planet revolving around the sun but this time in the form of an ellipse so sun is at the focus correct this is the minimum separation between planet and sun this is the maximum separation between planet and sun now suppose you are given initially that the uh, planet is over here making distance r from the sun okay and its velocity is making angle theta with this radius vector then we can find all the parameters of the ellipse based only on two equations okay so the two equations are conservation of angular momentum and conservation of energy okay so between the starting point and this let's say the minimum separation if i conserve angular momentum i will get this equation okay and between the same two points if i conserve energy i will get this equation so solving these two equations will give me the minimum value of r and the maximum velocity at this point similarly i can find the minimum velocity and the maximum distance of the planet okay now once i know these parameters i can also find the eccentricity of the planet of the ellipse using these equations okay so just by knowing the initial conditions i can find all the parameters of the elliptical orbit around the sun so here's a small comparison that will help you remember the formula easily okay so first of all look at this ellipse okay the ellipse has major axis of length 2a half of that will be a and the semi minor axis will be b right now look at the time period for circular orbit it is 2 pi under root r cube by gm right if you want to find the time period of elliptical orbit just replace r with a in the formula and you found the time period of elliptical orbit similarly for circular orbit you are given the orbital velocity root of gm by r so replace r with a over here but in case of ellipse the velocity is continuously changing okay so the maximum velocity over here will be given by this whole formula where you have to multiply 1 plus e divided by 1 minus e and the minimum velocity can be found by multiplying 1 minus e divided by 1 plus e correct where e is what eccentricity given by this formula over here correct so now let's discuss a very special and interesting case of elliptical orbits remember that our sun is fixed okay at a certain location at the focus correct and the planet which is much lighter than the sun is revolving around the sun correct now see this is your major axis this is the minor axis and the major axis has minimum distance a times 1 minus e and the maximum distance a times 1 plus e and the semi minor axis is b okay now what if i change the value of b 
by changing b by changing b i can change the value of eccentricity also correct so let's look at two special cases okay so the first special case that you are all already familiar with okay that's the circular path okay that's the circular path in case of circular path okay b and a both are equal b is equal to a and therefore the eccentricity becomes zero okay now this is one extreme value of eccentricity e equal to zero what is the other extreme value of eccentricity that is e equal to one eccentricity will be equal to one when b will be equal to zero so what would happen when b becomes equal to zero let's see so now look at this on the top left you can see that a and b are right now both equal to four and therefore the orbit of the planet is a circle correct now if i change the value of b if i decrease it what happens you can see over here okay the blue line represents the semi minor axis b okay and as you can see the shape has changed to an ellipse okay with the planet uh, revolving along the orbit and the sun at the focus correct now let's decrease b further and see what is happening the ellipse is slowly getting compressed okay the ellipse is slowly getting compressed and when b becomes equal to zero what happens your ellipse is now just a straight line okay when b is zero you are getting just a straight line path with the sun at one end okay and the planet revolving along this straight line okay now remember that in the diagram uh, what is given a equal to 4 and look at the total length of this straight line the total length of the straight line is 8 so when you put b equal to 0 eccentricity is 1 and therefore 1 minus 1 will become 0 correct therefore this part over here will become 0 okay and this part okay e is equal to 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 so this part becomes equal to 2a and b is now becoming 0 okay so because we took a equal to 4 so the total length over here was 2a that is 8 okay so suppose in this situation now because b equal to 0 planet is following a straight line path right so what is the total time period for the entire cycle of planet okay planet starts from here falls towards the sun assuming the planet bounces back from the sun okay it will again come back okay so it will follow a complete cycle in how much time simple we have to use the time period of ellipse so time period will be what 2 pi under root a cube divided by gm where m is the mass of the sun okay now pay attention what if i just want to find the time taken by the planet to fall into the sun okay obviously this is a special case of ellipse but the motion will not be similar to an ellipse okay as the planet is falling towards the sun it is constantly accelerating while moving towards the sun so assuming only one directional motion of the planet okay only the planet moving in this direction so if i ask you what is the time taken by the planet to collide into the sun so it will be given by half of this time period because this time period is for the whole cycle that is falling and coming back so half of that will give me the time taken for the planet to fall okay so the time taken to fall will be t by 2 so that is pi under root a cube divided by gm now if i say that this initial distance between planet and sun is equal to r then a is equal to r by 2 so in this formula i can replace a with r by 2 so i can get this to be equal to i can get this to be equal to pi under root of r cube by 8 gm so this becomes the time taken by the planet to fall into the sun now we will use these concepts to solve our question 
Now here we look at the binary star system. In case of binary star, there are two stars which are revolving around each other. Both of them are under motion. Why? Because both the stars have approximately same mass. Okay. In case of sun and planet system, the planet has very small mass which is negligible as compared to the sun. But in case of binary stars, both the stars have significant amount of mass that they cause motion in each other okay so here you can see that both of them will be following an elliptical path okay this is the elliptical path for the heavier mass and this is the elliptical path for the lighter mass okay so suppose you are initially given some data like both the masses are given okay their initial velocities are given and the separation between them is given so based on this data can I find their entire motion? Can I predict the shape and all the other factors? Can I find the time period of the uh, elliptical motion of the binary star? Yes. But for that, we need all the concepts that we revised today till now. And also what I taught you in the previous video, that is the pseudo gravitational force. So now take M1 as the reference particle. Okay, so M1 will now be fixed and m2 is now having some initial relative velocity correct now if you looked at my previous video you might be knowing that now i will be incorporating a pseudo gravitational force okay so the total force acting on m2 the total force acting on m2 will be g m1 plus m2 times m2 divided by r square okay so now this fixed mass is although m1 but in the formula for the force we will take m1 plus m2 okay so in our planetary system we had the sun okay and the planet was revolving around okay and the plan uh, mass of the planet was capital m so in this case okay in this case we will take m1 plus m2 as the mass of the sun and solve just like a regular planetary system so suppose now I construct the entire elliptical path. Okay, if I construct the entire elliptical path of M2 with respect to M1. Okay, now we are looking at the reference frame of M1 and M2 is undergoing an elliptical path around M1 with M1 at the focus. Correct. So if this is my minimum distance R minimum and here the velocity is V max in the relative frame. Okay, this is not the V max in the inertial frame. This is the V max in the frame of M1. Okay. So what are the equations that I can write down? So the first of all that you need to understand we can use angular momentum. Okay, so using conservation of angular momentum if I take this angle as theta so initially m2 v relative uh, into r sin theta this should be equal to final angular momentum at this position. So that will be equal to m2 v max into r minimum. Correct and also now I can conserve the energy but in case of energy one very important factor in the case of planetary system we were taking mass of the sun capital M here in this situation we have to take instead of mass of the sun we have to take m1 plus m2 so if I write down my energy equation so energy equation will be what minus g m1 plus m2 times m2 by r this is the initial potential energy at this point okay plus m2 v relative square by 2 okay this should be equal to how much potential energy at this point so that is minus g m1 plus m2 times m2 divided by r minimum okay m1 plus m2 times m2 divided by r minimum and plus the kinetic energy so i'll write down kinetic energy over here m2 times v max square by 2 so solving again these two equations i can find all the parameters of the ellipse so in case of planetary system and in case of binary star system in the frame of m1 okay in the frame of m1 in the reference frame of m1 how can we compare the time periods so for planetary system time period is given by 2 pi under root of gm by sorry a cube by gm right a cube by gm in case of binary star system in the frame of m1 the time period will now become 2 pi under root of a cube divided by g times like i told you replace capital m with m1 plus m2 
so this is your time period for binary star system and we'll be using this time period to solve our question so now coming back to the problem okay we have got m1 and m2 initially at some separation r between them right both the masses are only under the action of mutual gravitational attraction and there is no other force between them so the question is how much time will it take for them to collide okay so here we will apply the special case of ellipse where the eccentricity is zero and we will also use the relative reference frame for m1 okay such that we can use a pseudo gravitational force all right we are using two special concepts over here okay so first of all take this as your reference okay if this is my reference so m1 is now fixed okay m1 is now fixed and m2 is now we can say revolving around m1 along an elliptical path whose eccentricity is one okay elliptical path with eccentricity one so in that case m1 m2 is just following a straight line path correct and let's say this distance is equal to 2a so what is the time period in this case so time period in this case will be 2 pi times root of a cube by g times m1 plus m2 correct and because we are only interested in the time for collision that is the time taken by m2 to reach from this point to m1 we are not interested in the full cycle whose time period is given we are only interested in the half of the cycle that is the time taken by m2 to fall into m1 so that time taken will be half of this so my time taken will be pi under root of a cube by g m1 plus m2 and if i replace a with r by 2 because r equal to 2a right so if i put a equal to r by 2 i will get this time to be equal to root of pi under root of r cube by 8g m1 plus m2 so this becomes my answer to the question initially asked so now let's take the level of the question a little further and assume that the masses are undergoing elastic collision okay they are right now some distance apart okay they are attracted by mutual gravitational force they come and collide with each other and due to elastic collision they again bounce back again they will reach the initial separation stop again come back collide again go back stop again come back collide and this will go on forever okay so this is a periodic motion so what is the time period in this case the answer is very easy okay again if you take m1 as a reference then m2 will just keep on going towards m1 then bounce back again go towards m1 again bounce back and so on okay when you take m1 as reference so the time period is what we found earlier it will be equal to 2 pi root of g sorry uh, a cube by g times m1 plus m2 and if i write a equal to r by 2 okay because this total distance will be equal to 2a so i will get time period to be equal to 2 pi root of r cube by 8 g m1 plus m2 okay this will become my answer so now here's another very interesting question for you try this yourself okay so again we have got two particles m1 and m2 which are moving only under their mutual gravitational attraction okay m1 has velocity v1 in this direction m2 has velocity v2 in this direction initially and the distance between the line along their velocity vectors is equal to h and initially both the particles are at a very large separation okay and as they move towards each other as they come like this so eventually they will start uh, moving towards each other due to gravity okay they will come like this okay they will come like this and they will follow some strange path and again go away from each other okay so my question is my question is what is the minimum separation between them what is the minimum separation between m1 and m2 okay i'll just leave the question up to here okay so try this yourself apply all the concepts that we have learned in the two videos that i have uh, shared till now okay you will surely get the answer